day I woke up and checked YouTube and I had a thousand subscribers, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for making my dream a reality. And with that, I want to share with you how I engineered my approach to get to a thousand subscribers in less than two months. And you can too. The Bhagavad Gita teaches that while you are entitled to perform your duties, your labor, you are not entitled to the outcome of those duties. Focus on doing your best, but not be overly attached to the results. Trust me, you will come out better than when you came in with all of the growth that you will get through the process. And that is the one guaranteed thing through this journey. So number one, I wanna start with setting clear expectations with yourself. What do you wanna get out of your YouTube channel? For me, I'll be honest with you, I wanted to reach a thousand subscribers. I wanted to get there quickly and I wanted validation that my content was useful. If I were to re-engineer this approach, I would not go for a thousand subscribers right out the gate. I heard a quote recently that said that no matter what you're doing, what you're pursuing, the only thing that you can guarantee is you can guarantee growth throughout the process. You can guarantee you're gonna learn more about yourself after you go through the process. So with that, with whatever goal you have in mind, please consider the only thing that's guaranteed in this journey. And that is the growth that you're gonna get when you come out the next side of it. So don't think about necessarily, I have to get to a number of subscribers. Yes, that's a great consequence of the journey, but think more about, I wanna share something with the world and I wanna grow from that. I can guarantee you that you will grow from putting content out. You're gonna learn more about yourself in this journey than any other thing you're gonna do. But don't focus necessarily on that outcome. Don't focus on, I'm gonna be a New York Times bestseller when I put out a book. Focus on, I wanna get this content out because it's useful and it will be fulfilling to me and I'm gonna grow through it. I can guarantee you you'll grow, but I cannot guarantee you success in the end. So please set realistic expectations. And that would be my number one piece of advice for you that will help you as you go through this journey. Map out your plan and identify your bottlenecks. The number two tip I'll give you in starting out your YouTube channel or whatever you're looking at doing, it comes from engineering. It's that systems engineering approach. You need to do a block diagram and map out what you know that you need to do to get yourself to move forward. For me, what did that look like? For me, I knew I was starting a YouTube channel. Well, I don't have any video editing experience. That was something I needed to do. So you know what I did? I made a checklist. And number one on there was to get familiar with video editing software. I am not paid to advertise this, but I'm gonna tell you what worked best for me. I looked at Canva, iMovie, and DaVinci Resolve. Right out the gate, when I tried DaVinci Resolve, it's amazing and it was free, but even for me, a licensed professional engineer with no video editing experience, it was too steep of a learning curve. I was taking weeks to learn DaVinci Resolve and I was getting nowhere. So then I moved to iMovie. When I got to iMovie, it was great. I'm a Mac fan but I realized that I couldn't do that AI generated captions. I couldn't move things around. The text was fixed in prescribed locations. It didn't have the flexibility that I wanted. So that's when I landed on Canva. Canva for me really had the whole package. It let me enter in the type of product I wanted. It laid out a template for me with that product. So it skipped some of the guesswork. And for me, maintaining momentum was very important to me. It allowed me to start maintaining momentum quickly. I really enjoyed Canva and it was enough that I pay for a yearly subscription. So looking at the gaps and what you need to get to what your end state is with that systems engineering approach was very helpful to me. So look at what you don't know and just start chipping away at it. I'm telling you, doing a little bit every day will help you grow. I work eight hours a day, sometimes 10. So I would set aside a small bit of time at the end of the day, every day. And I was accountable to myself for that time. So identify the gaps that you have, start aggressively working towards filling those gaps, put a plan together and start. It's the only way you're gonna move forward in your dreams. Metrics don't judge you, they guide you. Here are the metrics every creator should watch. Now number three is like ingrained in my brain because I'm an engineer and it may resonate with you, but I found it very hard not to cling on this and that is metrics. Now I know I told you don't be so focused on the numbers, but yes, use the numbers as a data point to see if you are moving forward. I found that for every 100 views that I get, it generated about one new subscriber. 
I noticed that trend over time. I also noticed that when I started to get more subscribers, once I got to that 500 subscribers mark, my growth started going up quicker, quicker, quicker. So that was a very important data point for me as well. It seems as if the more people that start subscribing, the more interest, the more shares. New market research. I looked around at other YouTube channels and I looked at what is the typical time it takes to get to that grand 1,000 subscribers mark. And for other people, it looked like it could take on average about a year. Now, I didn't wanna wait a year. I know we are all impatient. I try not to focus on the outcome, but I did focus on the outcome. I looked at that 1,000 subscribers and I started to back calculate how quickly I could get there based on how many subscribers were subscribing to my channel every day. Now, as it started to pick up, initially maybe I'd get two to three subscribers a day and then it started to go up to 25 a day and I thought, at this rate, I am going to reach 1,000 subscribers in a few months, and that's what happened. So just be aware of your subscriber count as it goes up, and then try to course correct if you notice it slowing down. Maybe the content isn't as useful. Use that as a gauge so that you can really see if you're resonating with your audience. That's what that is for. It's not necessarily a de definition of success, but it helps you to see what resonates with your audience. Iteration and optimization. What does that mean? You've got to develop upfront a schedule that you can be accountable for for yourself. For me, I started with, I'm going to post one video a week, whether it's a video or it's a short. Now I noticed that when I got into it, I actually wanted to do more than that. Even though I work full time, it was exciting to me to put out more content. So I started doing two a week. With that, I noticed I started to burn out. So I stepped back. You have to do this dance with yourself. Only you know when you're gonna be inspired, but do not push if you are not inspired. That to me is a sign that you're not moving in the right direction. So keep iterating and keep feeling yourself. Feel how you feel when you post a video. Are you excited? Are you getting kind of bored with it? Is it coming out like it's work? If it's work, then I'd say dial it back. Dig deep in your soul. This is about your journey and it's about sharing it with others and what resonates with you will resonate with other people. So stay on that path and get to a duration that you feel comfortable with. I know they say that the YouTube algorithm likes consistency and I will say that I have been consistent for the past two months. I've done one to two videos a week. So if that's a pace you can maintain, I would recommend that. With less videos comes slower growth. deal with loss well. This for me was huge. I can tell you I was running one day and I yes had a little habit, not a great one, don't recommend this, but I checked my YouTube channel a lot. I was checking in the morning, then I checked it on my run and I saw that I lost five subscribers. I freaked out, but something inside me told me that is not a good response. So I use that Newton's first law. You gotta balance that negative force with a positive force. So I started a trend with myself. When I lost subscribers, I took that number of subscribers and I continued to take that number of subscribers I lost and I subscribed to other channels to match that number. Balance the negative energy that you get in this world with positivity. And I found that that was a really positive enriching experience for me and a really cool journey just to find new channels and to start putting that positive energy back in where it left off. Now I caveat, that if you look into the YouTube algorithm, you do some research, what I found is that there are spam accounts out there that will try to subscribe to your channel, and it may work for about 24 hours, but YouTube cleans out those subscribers. So this may not even be someone that subscribed and then decided they weren't interested, so do not take that personally. This just might be part of the YouTube process. But either way, I encourage you to balance out that negative energy with positive and take a look at my Newton's First Law, Some of the Forces video, which will talk to you about looking at those positive and negative forces in your life and how to balance them to move in your correct direction. Now my next tip for you is to deal with your YouTube channel or whatever that you're passionate about and your product that you're creating like a mechanical engineer would in a manufacturing process. What that means is you gotta have a quality assurance process going. You gotta make sure that the content you're producing is good quality for your customer. How do you do that? Well, you get a comment from a customer and it's not good. 
you look at that comment, you face it head on, and you take it for what it's worth. If it's negative, all right, there might be a nugget in there for you. Don't take it personal. This comes from a place of sincere passion, I would say. I can tell you the spot where I was when I was getting ready to go to sleep and I got my first comment. And that comment was not positive, but it was constructive. It reflected something to me that I needed to consider in myself. Now, to be authentic for me as an engineer, I have that engineer hat, but I also love to dress up and be fun and be sexy and vibrant. That's part of who I am. This person was struggling with my content and my image. And I took that sincerely and I thought to myself, that is a good perspective to have and I appreciate that that person took the time. And with that, I responded to the person and developed a great relationship and a working constructive criticism type dynamic with this person on YouTube. So I thank that person for my first comment and I will tell you to do the same. I know the initial tendency is to get a sick stomach to think, oh my gosh, somebody doesn't like my content, I'm a failure. Don't do that. Use that as constructive criticism and use that as part of your quality assurance process to make sure that you are putting together a quality product. The only way to know is to get feedback from your customers. And that is essentially what you are. You're building a business and you're getting feedback from your customers. So embrace it. It means that they're engaged. Now my next tip for you when you're building your product is to be efficient. How can you be efficient with something that you've never done before, that you're learning as you go along? Well, first off, you gotta embrace that part of the process. For me, I have never used video editing software in my life, so I'm gonna struggle and my learning curve is gonna be steeper than somebody that's familiar with that. So that was accepting where I am in the process, that I need to learn, making that checklist that I talked about, and just moving forward. I want you to look at yourself like a professional athlete when you're building your product. What would that athlete do before the big game? They would make sure they're sleeping well. They wouldn't be drinking alcohol. Yes, you heard me. And they would be nourishing their body well. Like I talked about in one of my videos, good energy in equals good energy out. You've really got to consider yourself like an athlete. To bring your best self to your business, to your product, you've got to take in good things. You've got to get good sleep and you've got to take care of yourself. You can't put out good products if you're not working at an optimal level. Efficiency in yourself will bring a great output to your customer set. So please make sure that you're taking care of yourself first and foremost before you start into this journey. Because if you're not ready, if you're not giving your 100%, your customers will tell. Now the last tip I have for you that I want you to really consider is just to be you. There is a person, there is an authenticity that you bring that no one else has in this world. You are unique and you have a story. Everyone has a story. Don't try to be like everybody else. You know, I did spend some time looking at market research. I'm not a TikTok fan. I looked at TikTok. I looked at all these things that other people were doing. And you know what it did for me? I'd say about 25% of it was useful and about 75% of it was just degrading to me. I thought, man, they've got it all together. Wow, they are in a reaping what you sow phase and I'm sowing seeds. That comparison and that market research, it, it could get unhealthy. So I would say be careful with that, but I would say be authentic. If you find yourself veering in another direction, you will feel it in your soul. Try to dial yourself back and go in the direction of your purpose when you're building your channel. One of the most important things I can say about this process is do not forget to document, document, document. Just like an engineer would, I want you to treat this business like you would a large engineering project. You wanna document your steps along the way. How I found to do that is by taking voice memos. When I'm in a particularly emotional moment, when I'm celebrating 10 or 20 subscribers, I would take a quick voice memo. I would talk to myself about where I was and how I was feeling. And then some of the greatest things you can do are reflecting on those moments and looking back at where you were and where you are today. This is a journey for you and you only. You're sharing it with the world and you're helping the world become a better place. Do not forget to document this because this will be so beneficial in your growth. Listen back, reflect, take time to pause. 
but do not forget to document it in your own way. And like I said, that might be journaling, but for me, it's getting out my phone and doing a quick voice memo to record the emotion that I'm feeling, the gratitude. And with that, I just wanna thank everyone for your interest. And I promise to you that I will keep giving you content to help you to beautifully engineer your life because I see no other way but to share what's helped me in a logical way, what's resonated with me as an engineer, because I genuinely think that it will resonate with you. So thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. And I will continue to share with you the tips that I've learned to help beautifully engineer your life. Have a great day.